I've been waiting to speak to you for <coughs> ever since I was watching this yesterday on On Air Post Reaction, which rumbled on and on. It still rumbles on. Have you talked about anything since? No, no. I, 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 I'd show you my phone and all the messages I've got from, from friends and acquaintances throughout the world, but it, we'd probably be here till 10 o'clock tonight talking <laughs> about it. Everyone wanted to talk about the end of that race. What, what, what did you think, Jasper, from where you were sat watching? From where I was sat watching, it was one of the most incredible things I think I've ever seen. And I think you said the same yourself as well, Crofty. I seem to remember you saying that in about a quarter of a century of um, commentating, this was potentially the most, end well, the most fascinating thing you had seen on the track. Is that correct? I, I was there in 2008. Is that Glock when Lewis passed Timo Glock at potentially the last corner of the track to win a world championship. But I think this actually is, is head and shoulders uh, above what we saw in Interlagos at that time. I, I've never known anything like it. Maybe we should have expected it, given the way this season went. Uh, for Lewis Hamilton, utter heartbreak through no fault of his own to have that championship trophy snatched out of his grasp after putting together a storming race. But he was a sitting duck at this moment with Verstappen on fresher tyres he was always liable to mount a challenge. Lewis had been on those hard compound tyres for many, many laps. He couldn't come into the pits behind the safety car. He would have given up track position. Red Bull would have stayed out. They couldn't take that risk at Mercedes because we didn't know if we'd get a, another lap of racing in. Now, Michael Massey, the race director, I think is a man very keen. And this was stressed in the stewards' decision last night that the teams agree with him to get racing to the line. If we have a late safety car... He's a man that, if he can possibly do it, will finish as a race, not behind the safety car. We finished races behind the safety car before, but it doesn't look quite so special uh, on the television, and it's not what the fans really want to see. But was it fair on both sides uh, what transpired uh, after the safety car uh, pulled away? Mercedes certainly don't think it was fair on both sides. That's why uh, they appealed under Article 48.12 of the sporting regulations. Uh, the safety car, uh, when it's out, the lapped cars can unlap themselves. Uh, but at the end of the following lap, that's when the safety car should be back in the pits and we go racing again. That obviously didn't happen. You saw it actually on the commentary clip there uh, where Martin said, right, the safety car's coming in. There were lap cars still just going past the safety car at turn nine. Um, Michael Massey wanted to clear the cars in between Lewis and Max out of the way so that the title challengers could have that fair fight. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But had he have waited the following lap, we wouldn't have got a racing lap in. That is why um, that procedure, 48.12, wasn't followed. And Mercedes, obviously, incensed by that, uh, went and protest with it. Now, 48.13 of the sporting regulations rather overrides the message about the safety car returning to the pits at the end of the following lap. It says that once the safety car in message is displayed, um, it's mandatory then for the safety car to get out of the way and we're going to go racing again. But what... The FIA stewards uh, also said, and Michael Massey was there to give evidence at the protest last night, was that Article 15.3, and I know this feels like I'm trying to explain the Champions League draw this afternoon, but it is a lot simpler, trust me. Article 15.3 of the sporting regulations gives the race director overriding authority over the use of the safety car. And that overrides 48.12, which is overridden by 48.13. So all you need to remember is that the race director can make adjustments and changes should he see fit. And, and that covers what Michael Massey did to let that race conclude. Yeah, no but there is a there big is question that needs to be answered. And I'm sure Michael Massey in time will answer it. And that is why, when we've seen races this season, Baku, uh, albeit uh, at a higher speed, faster part of the track when Max Verstappen crashed, we had a red flag. And we had two laps of racing to the checkered flag after that red flag. Why wasn't the red flag shown last night? Would that have been the fairest way to ensure that we had five laps of racing uh, to the checkered flag? It meant, would have meant that both Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen could have had a free change uh, of tyres. It would have meant that one car didn't have the advantage over the other. We would have had a standing start. And I think both teams would have accepted that. 
Lewis Hamilton had a 10-second lead, wiped out through no fault of his own. Uh, Max Verstappen and Red Bull played a clever strategy decision that Mercedes weren't in a position to do, but there was no red flag. And if we go back to our coverage on Sky Sports F1 over the weekend, Michael Massey told Karun Chandel, after we speculated about a red flag, because we've seen Kimi Raikkonen crash at turn 14, that there would be no red flag for crashes at turn 14. So was that his mindset going into the final race? Now, that sounds like I'm being hypercritical over the race director. I'm not. I think Michael Massey is a fine man. Um, I've known him many years now. Uh, he's always been very open and honest whenever we've had discussions. What I would say about Michael Massey, he is overworked and understaffed and under-supported by the FIA. He is the race director of Formula One, but that is not his only job. He has a huge amount of responsibility for single-seater championships around the world. He needs help. The FIA need to support Michael Massey. Charlie Whiting always had Herbie Blash uh, by his side, very experienced uh, in, uh, in Formula One, former mechanic, uh, uh, along with Charlie many, many years ago. But Charlie and Herbie were a team. Michael Massey needs a team around him. Formula One contributes the biggest source of income to the FIA, and the FIA needs to start supporting Formula One. And a race director who is overworked, who's barely had a day off this season, has put on a Herculean effort to get all the races done, but needs support now from whoever the incoming president will be as John Todd stands down in a few days' time. Mm. So... Over 24 hours on now, Crofty, from the race ending, the situation we're at at the moment is that the initial protests have been rejected by the stewards' inquiry, but we have this notice of a sec intention to lodge a second appeal. Given what you've just said there about the race director's overriding control and decision-making in this race and on the track, can you see anything else except for Max Verstappen being crowned the champion? No, I can't. And I'll, and I'll come on to Max Verstappen in a moment, because I think we need to end this discussion talking about the 34th champion uh, of the world. And um, what I'm hearing is that it sounds like Mercedes will probably back off from a further appeal. They don't want to look like bad losers. They have a championship to celebrate. They are constructors champions for a record-breaking eighth consecutive time. They don't want to drag this on and damage the reputation of the sport. The sport's reputation has been damaged to a certain extent because a lot of people just can't understand what happened last night. It's trying to, trying to explain the offside rule uh, to, to young kids. You know, it takes a, a few stabs to, to, to get it right. But Mercedes don't want to appear bad losers. They just wanted to give the man they think should be champion the best chance of being champion. They felt robbed by what happened. To put it into to simple context, if, the, if it was to go to the FIA Court of Appeal, Mercedes would have to overturn the result of the stewards, the result of the race, and the result of the championship. That, that is a pretty big ask. I can't see it happening. I don't think there is a precedent for, for three big decisions or three big events like that to be overturned. And I don't think Mercedes uh, will continue on with this appeal. But we'll hear, and we've got until Thursday to do that. But what, what upsets me most of all, uh, as, as someone who's worked in Formula One now for, for 15 years, who's commentated on 300-plus races, who absolutely adores his job and adored bringing the excitement and the passion to a massive audience uh, last night, uh, not just in the UK but around the world, is that people think it's a bit of a fix. It, it's not a fix. I think a mistake was made by Michael Massey in not throwing that red flag, but it wasn't manipulated and it wasn't a fix. But for people to feel that way, that, that saddens me today because I love this sport uh, and I love trying to bring it to the biggest audience uh, that is humanly possible. And also, it's very harsh on Lewis Hamilton, who has been hugely magnanimous in his reaction to the disappointment of losing out on that chance to be the greatest of all time statistically. Um, and it's also massively harsh on Max Verstappen, who was a very worthy champion, who was driven like a champion uh, pretty much all season long. Ten wins, 18 podiums, more podiums this season than any driver in a single season in the history of Formula One. He deserves to wear that number one on his car next year, and he will have the number one on his car next year. What he doesn't deserve is to have won it in the fashion that it was won 
through no fault of his own. That is a massive shame all round for the sport. Crofty, I've got another hour and a half on air. I could happily fill that time having a chat with you about this, but uh, we've got <laughs> advertisement breaks and I'm afraid we're going to have to go now. So thank you very much for joining us. <laughs>